I'm Harish Mehta. I'm a consultant cardiologist and director of cardiology at SL Raija Fortis Hospital. And it's a pleasure to be here for the MyClip launch today. Excellent. My name is Francesco Maizano. I come from far away. I'm in Milano. I'm the director of the Harvard Center uh, and Harvard Clinic in, uh, in uh, Milano, in San Raffaele University Hospital. And I'm very proud of, to be here together with Alfieri. We just came here to help uh, the launch of a new procedure, which I realize is already uh, in, in charge already since a couple of years. Sure. So welcome to India, Francesco. So uh, we do see mitral regurgitation often, but how often do you see it in your population? I mean, and the kind of mitral regurgitation you see there? Our uh, unit, let's say, is uh, dedicated to mitral uh, interventions since the very beginning. So we started back in the 90s to dedicate our interest, uh, scientific and clinical, in, uh, in mitral interventions. So we see many patients. And over the years, obviously, we have seen a shift of indication, uh, initially being cardiac surgeons by background. Our main uh, uh, interest was uh, repairing degenerative mitral, mitral regurgitation, some rheumatic. Over time, we got into the challenge of treating ischemic and idiopathic uh, mitral regurgitation in the context of heart failure. And that has been probably the time where we started having uh, more and more expertise in this kind of patients. Today, I would say is uh, half and half. We treat many patients with heart failure, mainly with a transcatheter approach. And we still treat a lot of patients uh, with the GD MR, the majority uh, surgically, but many of these patients require a less invasive procedure when they are a bit older or with comorbidities. And therefore we have a great tool which is a transcatheter edge to edge for uh, these patients. What made you shift from surgical tear to percutaneous tear? What was the shift? What is the reason of the shift? Well, many reasons. I mean, I think uh, this is a, uh, when, when we have been uh, uh, initiating this procedure, actually, when Alfieri invented the procedure, he had this intuition. Uh, the first thing you, it comes to your mind, you are creating a non-physiologic anatomy. So for us was from the very beginning a, a kind of an interesting topic to, to, to address from a surgical perspective. So uh, for many years we have been studying this technique, but back in the 90s it appeared clear to me that this could be the technology that could become a transcatheter one. Uh, it was at the beginning of the TAVI era, you know, there was not yet uh, any patient operated percutaneously, but we were already working in, in the preclinical studies with the transcatheter aortic and transcatheter mitral procedures. And that was uh, our intuition. And at that time I understood that I was a fully trained surgeon and I knew that I had to be trained in interventional cardiology to be able to transfer this knowledge and, and, and let this uh, uh, technology grow and become the new surgeon. And today I do both and uh, I think I, I try to uh, offer patients what is good for them. I think it's interesting because you would know the anatomy more than anybody else. Because for interventional cardiologists, we never see the heart open. We may have seen the heart open in, on a YouTube or in books, yeah. but you've seen how the leaflets look, how the scallops look. So I'm sure that helped you a lot and you could direct a lot of people there. Yeah, it is helping us a lot. It will help also the interventional community because we are sharing this knowledge and we, we offer a training uh, for tier, which starts with observation of surgical cases, to really realize that there is a, a huge amount of information that is lying below the iceberg of the leaflets. True. Below the leaflets, everything happens. So yes, it's, it's, it is a, an advantage, but also uh, has been important to be in interventional cardiology, understanding the value of simplicity. But I'm very happy that now I can see this event today in, uh, in uh, Merrill. Uh, I am happy that Merrill is investing in mitral interventions 
and I'm very looking forward. You know, I know that you participated to the first cases, and I'm very uh, uh, curious about this uh, uh, real-world registry that will uh, be uh, starting now, because I think you probably see different patient populations. So who are the patients you treat mostly in your practice? So we see mainly burnt out, actually. Most of us them come very late to us. They're burnt out, dilated cardiomyopathies, ischemic cardiomyopathies, or even untreated uh, myxomatous, barlows, uh, flail leaflets. So they have been medically managed for a very, very long time. So probably they do come late to us, and that's going to be a challenge for us. So what would you advise us? How do we as Indians take this therapy ahead, how do we uh, work towards this therapy because you have 30 years of experience and we probably have uh, probably five, six years of experience put together all over. Well, first of all, you are experiencing what we experienced at the beginning. When Once you have a new technology, you tend to use this technology in uh, at the beginning in patients who are desperate, who are probably not the best candidate for the state of the art procedures, which at the moment for, for mitral is, is surgery. But as the community gets uh, aware of the opportunity, probably you will see patients a bit earlier. The advantage you have is that uh, we have been learning so much in these uh, 20 years of tier and 35 years of surgical edge to edge that we can share with you a lot of uh, uh, tips and tricks and, and, and knowledge, although I'm very uh, also conscious of the fact that uh, you know the best way to learn is to do so you need to start your practice and you need to adapt this new technology into your practice and I will be very happy to support. yeah I think that will help because we don't want to suddenly jump because when a new technology comes you want to try it on everyone yeah. because that uh, it's like a trigger happy uh, cowboy he wants to shoot everyone with the gun he says so there we have to have people like you who hold us say, say, go slow boy. Yeah, you should go step by step and this yeah. will uh, help us.